And uh, welcome back to this week's edition of Ask Ron, where uh, Ron answers our Gold Club members' questions. I've got Ron here ready to uh, answer them at ready. How you doing, Ron? I'm good, man. I'm good. Beautiful weather, ready to go. In fact, I'm sitting here working on my uh, Structuring Your Empire event coming up here on May the 2nd. If you guys haven't registered yet, get on there and do it because it's free. Uh, it's 12 to 5 on the May the 2nd and 12 to 5 on May the 3rd. And it's all about your entity, structuring your entities, uh, asset protection, uh, estate planning stuff. Uh, we'll do land trust. Oh, we're going to do the IRA thing there. It's going to be a very, very powerful two days. Uh, do you have the link for that? Uh, I can uh, I can uh, include it on the video. All right. Okay. So, so guys, get registered. And set aside those time frames, 12 to 5 the second, 12 to 5 the third, and it'll be packed full of quality information you're not really going to get anywhere else. <clears throat> Perfect. All right. Do just want to remind you guys, um, with these Ask Rons, these are a bonus for our Gold Club members. Uh, so if you do want to ask Ron any questions, make sure to sign up for the Gold Club. If you're already a member, um, just go into the forum and under Ask Ron, create a post. And uh, we'll get it to it in the upcoming weeks. Ask Ron. Perfect. Then so, we'll uh, put you on here and make you famous. <laughs> we can't. All right. Perfect. So uh, our first question comes from Tim Matthews, Ron. Tim? He says, hey, Ron, I recently saw a house listed for sale by owner. Mm -hmm. By the time I got in touch with the owner, they had already listed with a realtor. What is mm -hmm. the recommended strategy for getting the realtor to work with me and the owner in order to sell the house on terms? Not going to happen. Wasting your time. Terms and realtors don't mix. We don't use realtors in the terms industry. We use realtors in the junker industry. Uh, we either buy from them, in which case the seller pays the commission, or we uh, use them to sell our houses after we renovate them. At least I do. Uh, but other than that, they have nothing to do with the terms business. If you... Um, you don't need a realtor to sell a house on terms. Trust me, you have, you'll have you have a lease option before the realtor even gets it in the, in the, in the listing. So uh, you're not going to, if they listed it, it's, it's too late. There's nothing you can do with it. Now, this is assuming it's not a house that needs rehab, because if they listed it, you might still be making a bid on that. But uh, other than that, ignore it, move on, go find a real prospect. All right, perfect. Next question comes from Jeremy Sepris out of Texas. He said, hey, uh, if you don't personally guarantee debt, mm -hmm. um, we'll say if you don't personally guarantee debt, do you ever use a business credit card uh, when you rehab homes for materials and such? I know there's some business cards that still want you to personally guarantee the debt. Uh, most of them do. Sure. Uh, well, but the loan is made to the LLC. And here's an important point here. If the loan is made to the LLC, it does not show in your credit report. But even if you guarantee it, but of course, if you default on that loan, they're going to come after you personally for the debt. But that's not unless you default uh, and they get a judgment uh, against you uh, because you're personally responsible. If you don't pay, they'll get a judgment against you and the corporation. But uh, I, uh, I, I, if you're going to use uh, credit, personally guaranteed credit, I can't think of anything better to use it for than some short term use that will get you a much bigger check back than you wrote from your account or your credit account, whatever. Uh, to be honest, back in the old day, I used credit cards heavily to, to buy and rehab houses and sell them. And sometimes just to close on the wholesale deals, It'd take my time getting them sold. As long as you don't forget to pay that money back when that big check comes in for crying out loud. Okay, that that credit is not for boats and cars and other goodies. It's for short term debt to use it to make a lot more money than it costs you for the debt. And I don't have any problem with that as long as you're careful about handling that money. All right. We have a uh, another question from Tim Matthews. He okay. says on the land on the land contract. Mm -hmm. Who is responsible for paying taxes and insurance? Usually it's the owner. But if the deed isn't recorded yet, who pays? You are the owner, Tim, regardless of whether the deed is recorded or not on a land contract. You have all the rights of the owner. Even the IRS says you're the owner. So uh, make sure you get that fact straight because that will govern your decisions afterwards. 
Yes, the minute that land contract is signed by both parties, you're responsible for the taxes and the insurance on the property, whether the deed is in your uh, entity's name or not. All right. Next up, we have a question from Tony and Angie Stewart. Of course. Uh, they're out of Ohio. They said, we are enjoying the Ron's Deal Finder platform and using it for not only direct mail, but also Facebook marketing. We target zip codes outside of the major metro area. What considerations would you make in determining what AI zip codes to use? Um, guys, that would be hard for me to answer. I don't live where you live. Um, I, it depends on what I'm targeting. If I'm targeting the lower end properties, of course, I, so I'm looking for junkers to wholesale or rehab, then that's where I would go by zip code to, to target those. In fact, we do just exactly that. Um, if I'm uh, doing, um, there's two kinds of uh, marketing. There's shotgun marketing and there's target marketing. Target marketing is where you really target in on your prospect. Shotgun is where you, like you run an ad on Facebook. That's shotgun marketing. The shotgun marketing will get you all kinds of deals, both pretty and ugly. So um, I, I actually only use targeting if I'm looking for the junkers in the low end neighborhoods, because all the rest of my marketing that is not targeted to that area is going to attract some uh, pretty houses as well as some ugly houses. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do to target, um, but if, at ronsdealfinder.com is certainly something all of you should consider because it is a tremendous database. Uh, it's got a AI involved in it. It's got facts on all the houses in America. And you can do your own mailing. You don't have to touch anything. They do the mailing for you, and their mailing prices are really cheap, too. And, in fact, ronsdealfinder.com, uh, check it out because you get the first. They charge you $300 up front, but that covers your first three months and five, five, uh, uh, five counties, five counties, I think. Uh, yeah, zip codes. Is it zip codes or counties? I can't. Uh, zip codes. Yeah. Plenty of, and you can move them around from uh, month to month. You can swap them. In other words, not even month to month. You can pull one out and put one in anytime you want. And uh, they, they do, you, not only do they do the mailing for you, they have the pieces to be mailed. Or they'll mail your pieces. But it's also a, a database that you can use to create your own mailing list. Uh, and if you want to target, uh, which, you know, I suggest that you do. For example, I want to. I want to mail to uh, probates. Uh, I want to mail to people that have been filed on foreclosure. I want to mail to uh, whatever target that you want. Uh, or I want to just mail to a specific zip code because I know it's low-end houses. Now, look, we do that all the time. In fact, um, it's our target marketing that gets us the wholesale deals that we do. And I'm doing uh, two, two, just sold one of the rehabs that I did, got two more. One more that's done, uh, ready to put on the market, and another one that's almost done. Uh, all of those are in low uh, type market because they all require rehab. Done quite a few wholesale deals uh, uh, that came from those same kind of targeted approaches to the low end areas. Um, in fact, we just got a deal uh, last week, signed up on a house that's worth about two twenty five uh, in good shape. Okay. And we got a gunner contract for 115, 115, and that house don't need any more than twenty thousand dollars worth of work on it max. Okay, so uh, that was a really good deal. Now here's the thing, that came from a postcard that we sent to um, a probate list, and it was six months old. It was six months before they actually contacted us, and we got a contract on their house. So. Um, that's one thing about mail it hangs around, but that we send it into that targeted area. Uh, it's a good area. It's a decent area. It's not a war zone, but it's a low end house. It's like the other thousand twelve hundred square foot houses that I've bought over the years. That's exactly what it is. Twelve hundred square foot concrete block house. And, um, uh, you know, I'm surprised how good a shape it's in. And by the way, it comes with a house full of furniture on top of that. So the two, two kids are selling it and they didn't want to mess with any of the furniture inside. So I guess we'll have to take all the furniture in the house for free. So, well, if I want to stage that house, which I would if we renovate it, and we probably will, uh, there's half the stuff already in the house to stage, stage it with. Uh, so anyway, I, the point is uh, you can target with your, with, uh, with deal finder. And of course you should. And that's the, that's the reason that you can pull your own list on there. 
and uh, it's cheap, man. It's really cheap. In fact, it's only two hundred dollars a month after the first three uh, months. And of course, you got to pay for the mailing, but you all need to go check that out. Ron'sDealFinder.com. I think you'll find it very interesting. Just to kind of add on to what you were talking about, Ron. Um, I actually just posted the edited version of the uh, clips that you and Adol sent me of walking through that house. We posted it as the uh, weekly lesson this week. Oh, so you guys that's want right. To check it out? Okay, good. Yeah, go and take a look. Yeah, I want to get that thing closed as fast as I can because I'm anxious to get started. On. I'll tell you guys what else, what else I'm doing. Man. I'm changing my strategy here a little bit on rehabbing. For most of my life, well, other than the first 10 years or so in my business, it took me about 10 years to figure out that I certainly didn't want to be the one with the trucks and the people on the payroll and the storage building for crap I'll never use, that kind of thing. Uh, and then I started hiring contractors. So one contractor to do the whole job. I've done that for years and years and years and years. But recently, I hired a contractor that did a terrible job, terrible job. And the first time I ever used him, and uh, on two houses, I might add, last time I'll, I'll, I'll use him. So it got me to thinking, um, what we're doing now on our next rehab, we're going to make some of the calls for the major components to the vendors direct instead of hiring a general to get that stuff done. Besides, the general contractor will usually charge you a percentage of the total job for their for work for them. So, for example, needs a roof. We call a roofer. We got roofers. We know roofers. We know the cheapest roofers. Needs a central heat and air. We know the cheapest companies to put them in there. Uh, so we'll we'll call on the big stuff. If it needs um, a, a kitchen uh, uh, countertops, the uh, granite countertops, we'll call the granite countertop people. If it needs flooring, we'll call the flooring people. Okay, we call needs painted inside and out. We call somebody we know that does a nice job, cheap for painting. So we'll handle that stuff. And then we'll just put a handyman in there to handle all the other stuff, the small stuff, you know, that's got to always be done on a rehab job. And not only will we save a bunch of money doing that, we're going to save a lot of uh, uh, time getting the rehab job done. Because, I mean, if, if you're handling the, uh, the uh, subcontractors, then you're in control of the time frame. In other words, they can be putting a roof on while the people are working on the inside and all that. For some reason, contractors just drag this, drag this, drag this out, and it takes months. And that's because they're working on other properties. Okay. Well, we're not. So it's a few phone calls and a handyman. And uh, I, I'm anxious to test out that theory here on this next house because uh, it, it's uh, going to change uh, the way we do rehabs, save a lot of money, I think, as well as a lot of time, which is actually saving money. Uh, people that are rehabbing houses uh, and they're new in the business, they don't realize that every day that goes by in that rehab is costing you a chunk of money. In fact, just take your taxes that are accruing, for example, and divide it by 365. And now you have a daily cost for taxes. Add that to your utility bills and uh, add that to your uh, maintenance, um, you know, mowing the lawn and stuff like that. And, and you know, you, pretty soon you come up with a nice hefty daily fee for just letting that thing drag. And in my opinion, this, this, for example, this house I was telling you about, uh, twenty thousand dollars worth, twenty five max. I think we'll be in and out of that house in a month. And now that's assuming we can get the contractors to come to the job reasonably fast. But hey, we're in control of that now. We're not relying on a, a major contractor to go in there and put all the pieces together. Uh, it's a little bit more work on our part. When I say our part, it's more work on Tish's part and my and my and my uh, acquisitionist part. It's not any more work on my part. But frankly, they would enjoy doing it that way anyway, because now we're we're in total control. Um, I didn't used to think like that, but um, after this last experience, I'm going to change my thinking and get a little bit more involved in putting these pieces together and getting this thing done and, and done right. And when we when we renovate a house. We listed with a realtor and it's sold almost instantaneously when we do. So uh, that realtor is going to become involved in this project well before it's completed because we always have her go out and do the final inspection. Uh, who better than the person that's about to put it on the market and sell it and have to listen to people complain about stuff that isn't done right. Uh, and uh, then by the time it is done and uh, we give the contractor the final draw, it's going on. It's probably going on the market prior to that. And um, uh, Jay Thompson that you guys would be interested in as well. 
he puts him he he puts him um he says put he, he puts him in the mls what he don't his realtor does and puts on it coming soon about five days before they'll actually open the house so they can see the pictures they can see the matterport video and the video uh, and all the photos of the house uh and, and, and even drive by it if they want to but they can't get in it until they actually open it up usually on friday morning and by the time saturday comes they got multiple uh multiple offers on the house and multiple showings on the house uh, and they go just like that but also remember realtors got a, a list of pent-up demand and people are looking for houses in this market today you'll never find that selling on your own as a fizzbo so anyway i don't know how i got off on this tangent but uh i, I hope you're learning something <laughs> okay. and, and luke didn't stop me so i just kept on rambling oh no we more information the better right ron mm, i guess <clears throat> all right so uh next question comes from arturo he's asking what would be the advantages and best explanation to homeowners in letter b of the property information sheet about the advantages of selling on terms well the vas don't can mention that subject now and if you want to know the advantages of selling it on terms then simply look at my closing script because they're listed right there and when you um, call that seller back regardless of what it says on that pi sheet you call them all back and the script goes something like this um, look john we um we uh, sometimes we pay cash for houses and sometimes we just uh, pay uh, people's payments until it's paid off in the full or or if it's free and clear make a payment to the seller until you're paid off in full in, in future so um, the cash offer is always going to be considerably less than the terms offer so are you uh, in, a, in a position to where you have to have cash when you sell the house or would you like to listen to other options to where you'll get a better uh, deal and now it's up to John to decide if he has to have all the cash or not and if he has to have all the cash, then you wasting your breath on terms. You might as well shut up and ask the next question on the script. Well, what is the least you could take if we paid you all cash, John? That simple script, those simple words will immediately tell you within 60 to 90 seconds, whether you got somebody you want to talk to or get rid of them, get them off the phone and move on and look for a better prospect. Scripts, scripts rule the world. And anybody working the phone that's not using scripts is making a mess so that's why they're written and they work and they've been proven hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times and yet i have a hard time getting people to use them well when you, you when you get out of script you're making a mess and you're killing your own deal because you talk too much and you're rambling on you talk too fast and you don't even you're know, trying to think about what to say next uh, so because the scripts are right on the gold club site aren't they luke it's called the closing script they are it does all that job for you all right all that job for you all you gotta do is read the script and do a little ad living as required for example seller you know dog barking in the background you know oh great what kind of dog do you have uh, okay look i got a term i got a whatever but then you get right back to the script and and the hardest thing to get people to do is learn to shut up <laughs> shut up quit talking too much you make your own mess create more questions that you got to answer and that's how you get off track and, and, uh, and lose control of the conversation. Anyway, quick start school. We get 14 mistakes people make on the phone. We got the scripts. And uh, that's where you're going to learn to change the way you converse with people going forward, regardless of whether it's real estate or anything else. Perfect. Which, by the way, we're doing, we're doing um, next week in Cleveland. And then in May now, we're doing another one here in Jacksonville, Florida, in our um, meeting room in, in, our, uh, in our office complex, if you're, not, if you're not aware. All right. Next question we have is from Jeremy Sepris. He is out of Texas, and he's asking, uh, how much does it cost to record a land trust? Well, that depends on where you're at, Jeremy. Here in Florida, you got to pay $7 for transfer tax, or doc stamps, we call it. And then recording call, you got about 20 bucks and you're recording a deed here in Florida. But I don't know where you're at. Remember, this is not a sale. You're putting a property into a trust for estate planning purposes. So they don't charge you the same kind of transfer tax you'd pay if you're selling to somebody. All right, perfect. Next question we have is from uh, Mario Ferriera. He's asked, will you consider doing another reality show like the one you did during the last recession like with Christy Frank. It was really good. Golly, Mario, you've been around a while. Okay. 
Um, I'd consider anything, honestly. I just I can't do everything. There's a lot of things I could do. I got a big old long list of what I should do, but haven't gotten around doing it yet. But yeah, that'd be, that'd be kind of fun. But um, my team would have to uh, figure that out and develop that. Uh, you know, I'm looking at where I'm doing this from, from my home. All right. By the way, that picture on my wall back there is dad. That's my dad. Name, they called him Frenchy. Uh, he died at uh, 82. Uh, I miss him. He's the best listener I have ever met. <laughs> Sit there and listen and listen and listen and don't say a thing. Let just people air out there. Out there. I remember when I was a kid, I think I was about 11. Uh, he had an amusement park up on the boardwalk in Jacksonville Beach. And the mayor came to see him one day. So we were sitting on a bench out in front of his office. I'm in the middle. Mayor on one side, dad on the other side. And, and the mayor sat there for a whole hour airing his problems to my dad. And all he was doing, uh-huh, uh-huh. And was all over. The mayor said, man, Frenchie, you've been a great help to me. And I'm thinking, he hadn't said anything. <laughs> okay. That's why he was a great help. He was a listener, not, not a talker. All right. Another one of them stories that are in, in here, Luke. Next question. All right. Well, you said he had an amusement park out at Jack's mm -hmm. Beach. Was yeah. that the one right by the pier? Uh, yeah, the, the old pier before the hurricane took it out. Uh, that was a 1964 Hurricane Doris, the last hurricane we've had here in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. Some go by, but nothing, nothing hit us. Cool. Yeah, he used to have all the amusements up there, you know, Ferris wheel and all the rides and games and, and um, uh, for years and years and years and years. And, uh, uh, and then 1960, well, I don't know, four, I think, had a big fire up there and burned a lot of the stuff down and uh, never built it back. Yeah, the reason I ask, I feel like all my, uh, I used to live out at the beach and all my favorite restaurants always had like the old Jacksonville beach pictures up and you yeah. always saw the old amusement park. In yeah. it. So you see some of them with him in it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, last question I have for you, Ron, is from Jason Hathaway in Castle Rock, Colorado. Hey, Jason. Thank you for giving me where you live. <laughs> he said, a, a question I commonly get from sellers who call me is, how does all of this work? I was okay. wondering how you respond to this question because I struggle with going into seminar mode and saying too much. Well, you, of course you do. Everybody does. By the way, Jason, just for the record, everybody sucks when they start. So, you know, don't it ain't your fault. Everybody sucks. I don't care what where they come from, what profession. They, I don't care if they're a salesman all their life. They still suck at handling that call because they still got the bad habits. And there's 14 of them. Um, and one of them is talking too much. And frankly, when you talk too much, you're not on script. So just by your question, it tells me you haven't been to Quick Start School because that's one of the answers that I give that a seller could ask right in the manual. Uh, and they're going to ask you that. What do you mean, lease option? What do you mean, um, uh, 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 I'll, uh, I'll make your payments or whatever. And the answer is, well, it depends on the question. Let's say the question is, well, what do you, because uh, we don't use the words owner financing. I'm trying to think of, um, or take over your debt or whatever. Uh, that means that I'll buy your house and I'll start making your payments until you're paid off sometime in the future. It's really that simple. Um, and now if it's free and clear, I'll buy your house and I'll start making you a payment. So you have a monthly income until we agree sometime in the future when it's to be paid off. That's it. And that's the end of the seminar. That's the end of it. Don't don't ramble on. And the last thing you want to do is get some seller involved in a conversation about what you're going to do with the house when you when you buy it. Oh, I'm going to put a lease option tenant buyer in there and they're going to be responsible for all the repairs. And there are some, then in the future, they're going to get qualified and cash you out. Shut up. That's not where you want to go with this conversation. OK, that just creates more questions and doubt in the mind of the seller. So seller asks you, what are you going to do with it when you buy it? Well, I'm going to uh, I'm going to lease it until it's sold, until it's cashed out. End of question, end of conversation. That's all it means. Keep it simple, stupid. And the key words is, and you should probably have to write this down and put it in front of you in great big black letters. Shut up, because that's the biggest thing most people have to work on to get their conversations uh, working better for them. You will be shocked. And how big, how big of a difference it'll make in your ability to converse with people if you just learn those 14 things on what not to do. And, of course, when you start using scripts where it's applicable, like it certainly is when you're dealing with sellers, uh, you just go right down the script. And, and they're in a very short script. I mean, I just I just went over the uh, qualifying paragraph 
So if, if you get past the qualifying paragraph and they want to hear other options, uh, right below that on the script is all the benefits of working with you on terms. And then at the end of that, it says, uh, is this something you want to, uh, to consider? And if the answer is yes, then you go to the three uh, the million dollar questions. Uh, what is the least you could take if we could agree upon the terms? Uh, is that the best you can do? Second question, uh, uh, we usually buy with nothing down. Okay, shut up. Wait for an answer. You'll be shocked how many people will say, okay. <laughs> they don't say, okay. Then you say, well, what is the least you could take down? Uh, they give you a number. And you say, well, golly, uh, we usually buy with nothing down. How close to nothing can you get? And you're going to get them way down. You'd be surprised if you ask the right questions and ask them like you intend to get the answers you want. In other words, you mean it. You're not joking. You'd be shocked at how it'll change your ability to not only get deals, but get good deals. And the last question is, I guess, uh, I assume you're okay if I just make your payment until you're paid off in the future. Shut up. Wait for answer. If they say yes, <laughs> many of them do. In fact, I think most of them do. You just got the term worked out without even knowing what the term is. That simply means you're going to make their payment until their loan is paid off, period. And of course, if you owe them anything above that, then they'll get it at that time with simple words that I've help you put in your contract there in, in the quick start school. So um, um, if you, uh, based on these questions, it doesn't sound like you guys have been to quick start school. I'm telling you, it's a decision you need to come to grips with. You're going to have to pay for the quality of education that you need if you're going to be a professional in this real estate investing business and the pathetic minimum price. And by the way, in April, we got a quick start school at half price for crying out loud. So get on the phone and call and have them talk to you about it. And we got a whole bunch of bonuses. $6,000 worth of bonuses that I'm throwing in. This is a great time for you to register for a quick start, even if you're not, you know, you don't have to go right now, but we are doing um, uh, May here in Jacksonville and I'm coming to Dallas in June. And that's as far west as I'm going to get the rest of this year. Uh, and I don't remember it from there. It's right on our, uh, right, it's right on your uh, website on ronaldgrand.com as well. But you owe it to yourselves to get to the quick start school. I still train it. I not only train it, but I, uh, my friend Jay Connor comes and works with me as well. In case you don't know Jay, he's a guy who lives in a city of 40,000 people in North Carolina. He renovates 30 houses a year, and his uh, net profit is over $2 million per year just renovating 30 houses. Now he does the terms and, and other stuff as well, but uh, actually don't do wholesaling because he renovates all of them. Uh, his average net profit per house right now is $82,000 per house. So you do the math. He's up over almost two and a half million dollars just on those 30 houses. OK, there's a beautiful renovation job, which you'll see at the event. You'll see the ugly and then you'll see the pretty because we do a video bus tour and how much stuff really costs. Not not the fake news that the uh, contractors are trying to put on you to pay too much because that's exactly what they're going to do. I'm going to show you some bids that's going to blow you away. I've got bids on stuff that I've gotten bids on personally. And here's one bid, here's another bid, and one bid's twice as, as much as the other bid, and the job's the same exact job. I got I got half a dozen of them right in the manual uh, nowadays. So you got to learn how to handle contractors and what stuff really should cost. And then we do all of that in there, plus wholesaling. Yeah. Uh, wholesaling is very, very easy, and I'll show you some houses that we have done recently, and it'll blow you away. Uh, we did five houses that I used as a teaching tool uh, recently. Five wholesale houses, $10 deposit on each house times five, wholesale them without touching them, never owned them, never bought them, never spent a dime on them. And we netted $147,000 just on those five houses over a period of two months. Two months, okay? Uh, just on, never bought the houses. Never, no credit, no loans, no realtor, no none of that junk. We never even bought them. Just put them under contract and flip the contract. And uh, frankly, anybody could do that. And that's how most people get started in the business right there, because it's simple, easy to do, and uh, and and it creates uh, quite a big chunk of money. But uh, I mean, I, 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 I uh, wholesaling is, is great, but that's not where the real wealth is. It's actually in the terms business where you get ongoing revenue for a house for years and years and years. And I'll show you one of those as well. <laughs> I bought a house 10 years ago right up the street from me. And um, took over a debt of 351000 I'll break these numbers down because it's going to shock you. 
I took over a debt of three hundred and fifty one thousand payment nineteen twenty five a month. Put a tenant buyer in there, got a fifty thousand dollar non refundable deposit from the tenant buyer. They lived there two years and they moved their choice, not my choice. So I figured up how much has this house made me so far all along the way. And I added in the 50, the monthly cash flow, because they paid me 2,500 a month. That's 575 a month cash flow for two years anyway. Uh, and I added in, um, you know, the depreciation, which was about 80 grand, the appreciation. And there's the big one. The house went from uh, worth about 385 when I bought it to about 700 today, just because of the hyperinflation that we've had. Anyway, all in all, that house has made me $650,000 in a 10-year period, and I still own the house, okay? That's the benefit of the terms business. You never get that in wholesaling or rehabbing, but you do get checks, and those checks are very, very nice. Of course, they're short-term capital gains. And, of course, I don't pay any income tax on this house until I sell it. And, of course, if you understand uh, how to do it without paying taxes, I've got three different ways, three different mm -hmm. gifts that the government has given us to actually sell houses and never pay taxes on them. So, um, man, I don't know what to, uh, what's, what's up with me today here, Luke, but, uh, you know, I'm in seminar mode here today for some reason. <laughs> You're talking to it today, that's you for sure. Work. <laughs> well, uh, I, I sure don't, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Um, as far as questions go, that's everything that I have for you. Um, right. is there anything else that you wanted to add? Uh, no, I just don't want you guys to miss that free, uh, structuring your empire. Cause that's the last time I'm ever going to do it. And that's on May the 2nd. So get registered for it. It's free. And then God, come see me at quick start school for crying out loud. I mean, you have no idea. You just don't know what you don't know. And you got 42 years of me coming at you. Somebody gave me a quote uh, a few weeks ago that I really like. And that quote is, when an old man dies, a library burns. All right. You better get out of this old man what you can get while you can get it. All right. Well, All right. Uh, See you Ron, guys week. I appreciate it. You have a great rest of your week. And uh, to all the Gold Club members, you do the same. Thank you. See you all then.